Hey everybody, it's the Combat Cast, uh, Working Fans Podcast slash Combat Cast. Man, they call Dave, and we're going to be uh, previewing a little uh, UFC 264 tonight. So uh, I believe producer Joe will be joining me uh, shortly here, and we're going to talk about some combat, man. Sorry, buddy, the allergy started getting the better of me. I, was, <laughs> I forgot. I'm like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> All right, so Dave, I, as people know, I mean, they might not know on the combat cast, but I have little to no UFC knowledge. Right. So I'm going to go through the card. Sure. And it would be kind of me asking you what's important about this fight. You know, what is what should we be looking out for tonight? I'm going to give you a couple uh, undercard fights real quick, too. Uh, just to let you know. Like, we're going we're gonna to discuss the main card, but just a few... Highlights. Three fights I want to bring up. Uh, Carl's Condit. Uh, he's a veteran. He's been fighting for a long time. Uh, God, I'll say he's in his 40s right now. But former champion. Uh, he was an interim UFC champion. He fought George St. Pierre. He holds victories over Nate Diaz. Back in the day, he was in a company called WEC, which UFC bought out. and had a lot of great talent. A lot of guys went on to win titles in UFC. And he was a champion there. Uh, he's fighting a guy named Max Griffin, who's coming off a performance of the night bonus. Had a big KO in his last fight. And it'll be just interesting to see. Carl's Condit had, like, God, I want to say four or five losses in a row, but they kept him around because he's such a warrior. And he won his last fight. He looked good. So it'll be interesting to see what he looks like now. Um, I think that's a fight you'll want to watch for. Condit and Griffin. Actually, Condit coming off two victories in a row, too, now. And then uh, another one, Nico Price. And Michelle Pereira. Uh, Pereira is a guy who will do cartwheels, and he's done backflips literally in a fight. Like, he's crazy. He's done Cabrera. Oh, wow. He's done Cabrera. Nico Price is a guy who finished people on the bottom. So, stylistically, this is an exciting fight with two guys who are just going to bring it. And in another fight, my buddy Chevy there, he would be remiss if I didn't mention this. Ryan Hall, who is absolutely, like, he does no striking. He literally he would start the fight on his back if he could. He's just a jiu-jitsu expert, and people do not like to fight this guy. He has very little activity because a lot of people just don't want to fight Ryan Hall. And he's taken on a bit of an unknown guy, as far as I know. I cannot even say this name, Joe, but I will try. I will try. Leah, uh, L-I-I-A, Topia? Topia, yeah. T-O-P-U-R-I-E. Guys, I don't know this guy. He doesn't have a Wikipedia page even, but hopefully uh, – you know, hopefully he performs better than what I give him here. But that's some undercard fights to check out. And those will be on the prelims? They will be on the prelims, which will be on What's ESPN. What time do the prelims start, and where can people watch them? They will be on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. I believe that will be about 8 o'clock. I will tell you that right now, though. And uh, yeah, Let's double-check that, because that's the weirdest thing for me, and it's the reason I've never, wa- never watched UFC – is because their whole time frame is based out of Las Vegas. So where like wrestling and almost any other sport, their time is based on the East Coast. MMA is based on the West Coast. I had heard that this week and I never thought about it till we see these time differences because this would be what, like a five o'clock start time if that's true for Vegas? Yeah, and actually it says here 6.15 Eastern time, but there's early prelims too. And that's when that starts. So the prelims that I talked about will be on the 8 o'clock show. Um, How many levels of prelims come in a UFC fight? There's an early prelims, and then there's the prelims, and then there's the main card. So okay. there's, usually, there's usually an early prelims that you can check out on like UFC Fight Pass, and ESPN Plus will have those too. The ESPN Plus will usually give you all your coverage. Um, and then the main card will be on ESPN Plus and ESPN. And then the pay... Oh, sorry. The main prelims will be on ESPN Plus and ESPN, and the main card will be on ESPN Plus and pay-per-view, which you only get UFC pay-per-views through ESPN Plus at this point, at least domestically anyway. Wow. So there you go. Now, the first match that I saw for the main card is Sean O'Malley versus Chris Moutinho. Yeah, Moutinho. So he's kind of an unknown. This is his UFC debut. He's taken this on short notice. Uh, O'Malley's opponent was uh, injured going into this. Uh, so Who is he supposed to fight? Oh, you're fucking putting me on the spot here, bro. Oh, shit, man. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We did this 
O'Malley. Well, anyway, about O'Malley while I'm looking this up. Uh, he's colorful. Uh, he's got a lot of finishes. People love him uh, or hate him. Uh, he's got the one loss, uh, but he didn't handle that well. He says he got caught and that he's still mentally undefeated, <laughs> whatever that means. Uh, so I think that's rubbed some people the wrong way. <laughs> but uh, he's very colorful. Joe, you'd like him. He's huge into gaming and smoking weed. Uh, he's always promoted weed. He was supposed to face uh, Louis Smoka on this card, who's another <laughs> quality Smoka. Unintended, right? right? He was about to get his ass smoked. <laughs> but yeah, O'Malley, uh, you know, he's always got multicolor hair. And uh, who was that uh, rapper dude uh, that was going to jail? Uh, 619. Six, nine. Yeah. 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 He kind of looks like him sometimes when he does his hair and shit like that. So, okay. So he's a different animal. Yeah. He's definitely big into different strains of weed and stuff like that. You should check this guy out. You'd probably go on great with him. So <laughs> uh, we'll see. You. Yeah. I'll see him tonight. Yeah. I, on the pay per view, not personal. Right, not personal. Yeah, no, I get it. So now I, I'll look for. I'll, I'll do a little prediction here too. I'll go uh, a Mali in a first round knockout too. Oh wow! Okay, so you got a Mali in this fight. You don't think the UFC uh, debut uh, is going to motivate the other guy? No, <laughs> I think he's <laughs> outclassed, and I think uh, he's overmatched. But you never I, know. That's the great thing about fighting. We'll see. Now, that is a bantamweight fight, but for a ladies' bantamweight fight, there's Irene Aldana, 12 and 6, versus Yana Kunitskaya. Kunitskaya, How is it? Kaya, yeah. Yep. Not gonna 14, not, 5, no, Kaya, no, no right. contest. Yeah, I'm going to go with Yana in this one. Um, she's coming off a pair of wins. Uh, this is a fight. Uh, Donna, I want to say, I'm looking at her now. Her last fight, she had a uh, loss to Holly Holm, which is no no shame in that. Holly Holm's beating Ronda Rousey and some of the best, former boxing champion as well. But uh, I like Lakana here. Uh, Coochie Lakana. <laughs> <laughs> I like Yana. <laughs> okay. Now, what is her style? Yana. Is she a striker? Is she more on the ground? I think she's more of a wrestler on the ground, clinch. Uh, you know, and I think that uh, Yana will probably get it done in decision. I don't look for either one of these women to get a finish. No. All right. And Aldana, same type style? Yeah, from what I've seen. But we'll see. I'm not as familiar with these two. This is the one fight that I was like, all right. But, oh, yeah. You were saying you had to look it up real quick before we started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Yana's definitely, I've seen her around a few times, but nothing ever really stands out about her. But. Now, next up, we have a heavyweight battle between Tai Tuvasa, 12 and 3, versus Greg Hardy, fighting men for once, 7 3 and 0 oh, with one <laughs> more contest. Somebody did his homework. <laughs> Greg Hardy has a I'm bit only of familiar with him out of the NFL. So, like, I'd expect to see him more in a thriller fight, not in a UFC ring. But, like I said, I'm not familiar with UFC too. Big. Greg Hardy has definitely, uh, he's a great athlete. Obviously, from his NFL days, he's big, he's strong. Sorry, guys, my allergies are killing me today. But uh, he's big, he's strong, he's capable of turning lights out. Where he's running into trouble is fighters that are more experienced than him, more skilled. They can, uh, you know, take him down. They can pick him apart with strikes. His cardio is a bit of an issue, too. He's probably not going to have that issue with Ty. Ty likes to bang, and Ty likes to bring it. Ty is also famous for doing a shoey, which is uh, after he went to fight. He'll uh, drink a beer out of his shoe. Uh, he's from Australia, and that's an Australian thing. I think they've even uh, done it with uh, with piss before. I think he's drunk like fucking piss and beer out of a fucking shoe. Ty is uh, <laughs> he's Jesus not a normal Christ, that's guy. That's how he celebrates a victory. Pissing yeah, in a boot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, God, man, I, that's some Jake well, Roberts shit right well, there. But who do you got for drinking this piss back at that time? Uh, I'm gonna go. With Hardy. I think Hardy gets it done. Um, I like Ty. I think if Ty can stretch it out a little bit, Hardy's cardio isn't the greatest, so maybe Ty will pull it off. But Ty's not known for having super cardio. You know, I like I like Ty, but uh, I got to go with Greg Hardy. I think he's just – he hits a little harder, and he's good at just blitzing people. And I think he'll catch Ty. I don't think Ty will have the skills to stop that. But we'll see. All right. Now, next up, I believe it's the co-main event. Yes. Gilbert Burns, 19 and four versus Steven Thompson, 16, four and one. 
What are we looking at here style-wise for both fighters? All right. Steven Thompson, Wonder Boy, uh, comes out to Wonder Boy by Tenacious D as well. He was like 57-0, and 0, I believe, in kickboxing at one time. Uh, he's got a karate stance. Uh, he's probably the most dynamic karate fighter ever in the UFC. Uh, okay. Highlight, head kicks, brings a lot of that to the table. Very exciting. Gilbert Burns, great striker, really improved in his last few fights on his striking, but he's got one of the best jiu-jitsu games in town. So if this goes to the ground, Gilbert Burns might strike, uh, might uh, submit him. I don't think uh, Thompson has ever been submitted, and he's been in some bad guillotine chokes. Uh, so... It'll be interesting to see what happens. Thompson also has great takedown defense. So I would think this will be on his feet. But I'd also got to say Gilbert is definitely underrated in the striking. So I wouldn't be surprised. Um, man, it's a tough, tough fight. Uh, Thompson's been in a lot of wars. and I think that could take its toe on him. My heart wants to go for Wonder Boy. He's truly one of the nicest guys in UFC. And Gilbert just had a shot. Thompson did have a shot a few while back. But I'd like to see Thompson get one more before he goes out in the sunset. But, man, my mind is telling me I'm leaning towards Burns. I think Burns is going to catch him. I think Burns is really, really skilled. But this could go either way. This is definitely a pick em fight. But I'm going to lean towards Gilbert Burns. I think he just has a little bit more tools. All right. So the main event, the show that is bringing me to this, besides my schedule just working out this way, Dustin Poirier, 27-6-0, one no contest versus Conor McGregor, 22-5, and Dave what are we looking at for this fight? I mean, I know McGregor's a big name. I've seen yeah. him box. I've seen a couple of his fights. Style-wise, what are we looking at? And obviously, who do you got? Connor's going to try to come out fast and early. Uh, that's what he does. And uh, that's going to be the most dangerous in the first two rounds for Dustin. Now, obviously, in the last fight, Dustin was able to finish him in round two, but he got caught early a couple times. But the game plan was, Dustin kept hitting Connor with those leg kicks, and Connor did nothing about it. I would be amazed if Connor doesn't have a counter for those leg kicks this time, and he doesn't have a game plan to stop that. That being said, I'm sure Dustin has game plan for this too. So, Connor, if he catches him early, is going to be really dangerous. Those first two, three rounds, I would not be surprised to see Connor catch him. He's got to be the underdog, and my money will be on Poirier, but. Connor's definitely going to be dangerous in those first two, maybe three rounds. I think the thing about Poirier, if you look at his career, unlike Connor, when things get tough, Poirier is gritty. He lasts. He keeps fighting. He's been in several fight of the nights, and he doesn't give up. Poirier is also just more well-rounded. He's a good striker. He's good in the crunch, and he's good at like taking people down. His wrestling's solid. He's just solid everywhere, and I think he's got more heart. So I'm favoring Poirier. But I will not be shocked if Connor catches him in rounds one or two. He's just got that kind of striking position, and he's going to be more motivated to come back this time. I honestly believe that. But it's a make or break fight, make or break fight for Connor too, because Connor, when you're that level of famous, you just can't lose these fights. It's not like another guy where you lose a bunch and you bounce back. He's making so much money, and does he have that hunger still? That's the big thing. Does Connor have that hunger? He's going to use all that money and all that resources he can to game plan and do what it takes to beat Dustin. We'll see. Smart money's on Poirier, but don't be shocked if uh, McGregor catches him early. Do you have an official pick in this fight? Dustin Poirier, I'm going to go round four. I think this goes a little bit. TK. Well, guys, let us know who you think is going to win in the comments. And. On the audio version of the show, this will be paired with your UFC review. So we will see you guys later and have a good day. Thank you, guys. Get the Lambo car, house in the hills with the stars. Told you I'd raise the bar. Told you that I'd go far.
Tell them that's what we're ready for. War. Tell them that's what we're ready for. War. Bringing that to competitors. Till we see the confetti fall, be ready for war. Tell them that's what we're ready for. War. Tell them that's what we're ready for. War. Bringing that to competitors. Till we see the confetti fall, be ready for war. Tell them I'm ready in the opponent. The crown heavy and every minute it's chosen. A path only fit for kings, and you don't know what this court means. What did you win this for? If it isn't getting more rings, then you gon' have to switch your team. Uh, trust me, it gets more mean. I'm a nightmare going up against your dreams. First step is explosive like a bomb hit. Bet if I let it fly, I cannot miss. And you ain't got a chance at the top ten when you gettin' clamped all night by your locksmith. On the block, throwin' lobs to my top bigs. I'm a chef, no look, what's the top dish? Tie game, through the pressure as the clock ticks. Cross from a step back, hit a shot quick. Joe here from the Working Fans Podcast. And at the Working Fans Podcast, this is just a podcast that three lifelong fans created to have a place to talk comedy and pro wrestling. Now, our comedy podcast releases every Tuesday, while our wrestling podcast releases every Thursday. We release bonus episodes under the moniker Working Fans Presents every now and then. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, any major podcast provider. The important thing is just please like, rate, review, subscribe wherever you listen to us. Now, we have started a new thing. We are now on Amazon and Audible. So those episodes release every Monday. And that's kind of going through the archives and just releasing our old episodes in a new area. So if you want to live through the process with us again, take that journey with us again. You can find us over on Amazon and Audible. Now, if you can't get enough of us in the audio form, check out our YouTube. It's youtube.com slash C slash Working Fans Wrestling Pod, or just search Working Fans Podcast on YouTube. We have the, the whole archive is up there. And if you listen to the Working Fans Podcast, you are more than familiar with the 531. That is our signature segment where we take your top five list on a particular subject, vote it down to a top three, and then debate it down to a top one. Now, guys, if you want to hear three guys talk shit about comedy, wrestling, life, anything, you will enjoy the Working Fans Podcast. And that's how we that's how we start. Working Fans Podcast Combat Cast Edition. <laughs> I hit record. We're just going, baby. That's all right. It's like the old Edge and Kristen show. If you ever watched that, they would just start off and guess halfway through would be like, wait, we're on? <laughs> But all right, guys. So we are the day after UFC 264. Fun, entertaining card. I didn't get to see. I saw all the main card. Um, Chevy, first question for you, man. Your buddy Ryan Hall. <laughs> I didn't see that fight, but uh, Michael Bisping said that he thought it was interesting. Michael Bisping said on the post show he loves Ryan Hall, but he said if we're going to be honest, he said he's very one dimensional. He said he's a specialist, and he said that works, but eventually, you know, people are going to figure things out. Was that what you saw? Yeah, I, I mean, I felt like he just kept putting himself in really di- dangerous situations. Obviously, he's diving for the leg, you know, because that's his game, the leg lock game, but um, it's a fight. So he was there to get hit, and obviously that's what happened. It looked like uh, he wasn't using a lot of technique to stand up, you know. And he got caught and finished, but he'll be back, I'm sure. Oh yeah! yeah. Now this it's guy, a tough this fight. guy fought. Uh, what was his name? Elio Torpia? Torpia? <laughs> Anyone know? Yeah, Elio Torpia. Yeah. <laughs> so he's he's Spanish. All right. <laughs> yeah. He's undefeated. Yeah. Oh yeah, he had a lot of finishes too. Mm-hmm. So this guy, I'm just butchered his name. So like, if we ever get interviews on this show, it won't be with this guy. <laughs> That's not, he's not gonna. <laughs> he can come on and tell us how to pronounce his name properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> Considering the way you pronounce names, you probably struggled like 
John Jones or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, mean, you mean John Africa? <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> Shout out to Brendan Straw, by the way, if anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, all right, Michelle Piera versus Nico Price. Carney, I talked to you. You said that this fight got robbed of fight of the night. Um, I again, I wasn't able to see this one, but uh, Piera got the W. Uh, how'd you see the fight? And what'd you think? Was it robbed of fight of the night? I mean, obviously, you did tell me. I do think it was a little bit closer than he missed it. I think that Price also could have won, but it's close enough that I can't call it a robbery. I might call it a robbery potentially for fight of the night because it was wildly entertaining. It was very back and forth and it was very competitive. Something I fairly Mally fight, but that was a lot more one sided. But I did think this file the fight was was really wild. Um there were some moves that Correa, I don't necessarily condone all the crazy shit he does, like trying to do the flip onto his opponent. and stuff. <laughs> Onto his head? That's some, that's some, yeah, that's some video game shit, and I can see why people will be turned off by that, but I can't hate on the guy for at least trying to keep us entertained. Mm. So I did think it was a great fight. I thought it, was, uh, it could have gone either way. The judges definitely saw it one way, but I thought that that was a lock for fight of the night. Speaking of video games, real quick, Ryan Hall was the uh, the Dark Souls player that just kept spamming the the roll, <laughs> able to dodge everything. But uh, yeah, he tried to take the uh, I'll call it the the Damian Maya approach, <clears throat> focusing on one game plan, and when it fails, you go back to that same game plan until the opponent figures it out. It's like a tutorial in a video game, like they tell you to do something, and you just got to get your timing down. That's exactly what his opponent did to Puria. Just waited for him to expose himself, and then he took him out. And it was kind of sad because I like Hall. I was expecting him to uh, get knocked out, but I kind of figured he was gonna do what he always does, and that was just pull out that surprise uh, heel hook that everyone sees coming, but no one can stop. So before, where no one wanted to fight him, I'm sure now some people want to fight him. But to go back to your point about Freya uh, and Price, that was that was a great fight. I would encourage anyone to watch it that hasn't seen it. I could see, I guess, why they give the fight of the night to uh, those other two cats, which we're definitely going to talk about. But this was, I think, more competitive. Shout out to uh, to Peter, by the way, too. Um, <laughs> all right. Last uh, preliminary fight. Uh, I did not catch. Uh, Chevy, I'll get you. Uh, Max Griffin versus Carlos Condit. Uh, Condit had two wins in a row going into this. Uh, he seemed like he knew he lost the fight, though, when I showed up. Uh, what did you see? Um, I mean, same old Condit. He, he just looks a little too slow for for Max. You know, he still has his, uh, his natural-born killer instincts and his attitude about the fight, but he just looked like he lost a step or so. Max was right on him the whole time, so yeah. tough fight for him. Tough to see him. Uh, he's getting over the hill looks like carney would you do the same thing or how do you see it yeah griffin definitely won that fight um condit did have a couple signs of life in there You're like oh maybe there's the old carlos condit but uh quickly that goes away so i'm i'm with chevy i'm in agreement with him with he's he's getting into the twilight of his career that division is just going to be too competitive for him to go with the pace that he's at right now so unfortunately it's almost time for him to call it a career or go somewhere else where he might shine a little bit more than in the UFC because it's all killers. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's a few fun fights out there for him, like a rematch with Robbie Law or something down the road could be interesting. But, yeah, I think that uh, at this point in his career, you're looking at fun fights, and that's about it. Um, all right, main card. Actually, uh, you missed something. Ahead. There was there was one more fight in the prelims that you skipped. And I can't remember if I'm pronouncing this guy's name correctly. I'm trying not to date his name. <laughs> Duplessis? Who, yeah, Discus. Uh, yeah, who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he hates when people get his name wrong. That was his whole post-fight speech. Yeah. We, uh, we need to get you a translator, much like a lot of these fighters do. But, uh, I want to, yeah, our, that Brazilian uh, guy. He's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, caught Giles with his hands down and just knocked his ass out. Yeah, that was a uh, round two. I saw that. But. Did he get performance of the night, too, along with Tui Vasa? 
Uh, let's Hold see. On. Good question. Oh, come on. Uh, he did. That he did. Yeah. So congratulations to Driscus. Uh, he did really good. If I said his name right that time, by the way, it was by accident. So anyway. I think that Dana said that using that throw Aldana some money, though she missed weight, so I don't know why he would do that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I maybe I read that wrong. Well, I don't know. He's just uh, real giving last night, I guess. Yeah, he was in a giving mood, apparently. It's all that extra money is making from Connor being on the card. Yeah. <laughs> um so, I mean, this card started off with a banger. Uh, it was fun at night. But although we did argue it wasn't competitive enough, technically. I mean, O'Malley. My God. Sean O'Malley versus uh, Chris Montino. Uh, the guy, I was looking at these numbers for you guys. Let's just check this out. Round one, O'Malley outstruck him 77 to 24. Round two, 70 to 19. And then round three, 83 to 27. Um, close fight. Close fight, right. On paper, this is crazy. But what uh, Chris showed was that he just so – he was so game, right? That was like the story of the fight. He had so much heart. He just kept coming forward. Uh, as I believe uh, your wife said, uh, Chevy, the neon zombie, I think we were yeah. thinking about calling him. Coining, coining his new nickname, yeah. Yeah, hashtag neon zombie. Get it started. <laughs> I uh, I thought, uh, I mean, it was just a great story. And, like, I can't wait to see this kid fight in the UFC again because it was six days notice. Um, you know, I'll get you guys' opinions on the fight, but I was trying to think of an- another opponent for O'Malley next after this. And the guy's a lot higher in the rankings than him, but I just think it'd be an interesting fight. I don't know if he'd be interested in it, but I'd like to see him. I know he called out Dominic Cruz, which is the popular thing to do, but... I'd like to see him against Marab. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I think Marab would put him on his ass. I don't think UFC wants to see that. He eats but, him up. He eats him yeah. up. <laughs> Cardi definitely is all for it. <laughs> he jumped on that one. I'll let you take the lead, Cardi. Uh, so, what were your? I mean, I, I think we got to give him his due at least. Impressive performance for what it was. But what were your thoughts on the fight? And, uh, yeah, talk a little bit about that matchup and why you like that. <laughs> I, I guess impressive to a degree. He was hitting a moving target for about 14 and a half minutes. Mm. But, uh, I mean, the kid was just walking in the punches. I was just comparing to, to Jessica Andrade last night with how she just how really keeps pressing forward. And to see O'Malley on the defensive while throwing strikes for a lot of that fight was, was pretty interesting because he had to keep moving backwards. Uh, get away from this kid and he just kept feeding him shots and it was a star making performance for sure uh, I do hope to see more of Mutino and I do hope that he fights a little bit smarter I won't necessarily say that he exposed O'Malley but I'm sure the, it, regardless of what he thinks a lot of people were trying to step up to fight him like Ricky Simone a lot of other guys in the division were throwing their names out there on short notice saying they take him I am absolutely with you. I think that uh, we're going top 15. I'm assuming Marab is top 10. That He's a top 10. Yeah, yeah, I would love to see Marab versus O'Malley. Not just because I dislike O'Malley and want to see him get wrecked, but I do think it would be an entertaining fight. The kid always puts on an entertaining performance, regardless of whether or not I actually like him. He's a very skilled fighter. Uh, I just think he's a bit of a clown. But, uh, I mean, you could always just give him that, that Simone fight, if only to keep trend going of him fighting other opponents with really terrible hair. <laughs> I uh, I just want to say, before Chevy comments on it, I'll jump on that too. Uh, I guess why I like it is Marab is higher in the rankings, but also for Marab, it gives him a fighter with a bit of a buzz. So that's why I kind of like the idea. I think it's good for both of them. Um, uh, Matchmaking-wise, it's maybe not the best for, again, if you're trying to like build O'Malley up. But I think in terms, again, but if he gets the win, now this kid's suddenly like in a, a title type contention too, possibly too. But yeah, I, I can see the UFC's probably not going to do it. Chevy, give me your thoughts on the fight and my potential matchmaking. So I thought, you know, Sean looked great. thought his cardio held up uh, yes. pretty well for, you know, running backwards and all the mm-hmm. lateral movement he had to do and. Um, obviously, his accuracy was really good. I don't know how much uh, head movement Chris was working on, but um, obviously great chin. So Sean O'Malley showed some uh, – I think he was getting a little bit frustrated. They couldn't put him away. Um, also, the stoppage, 
I didn't agree with the stoppage. I thought, yeah, he was still coming forward, still throwing punches. Yeah, he was getting beat up, but it was only 30 seconds left. Just let him finish the fight. Mm. Um, Shout out to uh, his his uh, boxing coach, being Coach Edmund, teaching him all about that. (laughs) Great head movement, yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, and it too, like later on, we'll talk about it, but in the Connor fight, when Connor, uh, ended up being a movie snap tibia, like those last few seconds, I know it was not quite 30, but Herb let him eat a bunch of fucking punches. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, right. like, we could have stopped that too. I would have let him yeah. eat the punches too, just because I don't like it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was Herb's idea. Yeah. Um, so, uh, next names I'll butcher here. Uh, I think I got one of them. Irene Adana, who won, uh, versus uh, Yaina Kuntitskaya. <laughs> Kuntitskaya. <laughs> Kuntitskaya, yeah, thank you. I got a great idea for a bonus show. You're going to go through a division and list every name. Yeah, uh, there we go. Uh, oh, man. Proper pronunciation. <laughs> I, I, I can't speak for Chevy. I'm not an expert on pronouncing fighters' names, especially yeah. when the Brazilians and the, the Polish. But uh, that was, I mean, that was very David of you. Hootsakaya. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I, when I thought of this podcast, this was one area I did not think about that I was going to be have to deal with. Uh, but hey, I'm not going to be. Uh, we got to get Anik on the podcast to teach us how to pronounce. Oh, all the man, he's so fucking good. Yeah, yeah. he would be. I'd be oh. definitely in his class a lot. <laughs> I think it may have been Rogan that said this years ago, but I believe what they do is have this kind of phonetic spelling or breakdown of the names that they they hand them so that they can like pretty much break down exactly how to pronounce those names because that's got to be difficult to keep up with when you got a ridiculously large roster in the UFC and a bunch of unknown fighters or guys that don't really have a lot of name recognition and you're trying to get these names right, which... Even sometimes the commentary team still screws up names, so mm-hmm. I think we could get a pass on that too, since we're you know jobbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought Adonna looked impressive though. Uh, just obviously she missed weight, so that kind of sucks. But I thought she looked good. I'm not going to comment too much on this fight because there really wasn't much to comment on. She came in, looked sharp, caught her, and then beat her up on the ground. Um, what I will throw as a potential fight. And I know this girl has a fight coming up with Macy something, I believe. But uh, Aspen Ladd, uh, they're actually right next to each other in the rankings. They're, uh, Aspen Ladd's actually number two. Adana was number three. I like Ladd. I think uh, they both finished uh, Yana in the same round, too. So I think you're looking at equal skill level, and that could be a fun fight in that division. Neither one of those women are ready for Amanda Nunes, however. But... Um, you know, something to just think about. Uh, Chevy, I'll start with you this time. What do you got? Uh, yeah, I think Aspen Lad's a good good matchup. Uh, you're right when you say I'm not ready for Amanda Nunes, but n- none of them are. So no. it's going to be uh, tough going for anyone that gets matched up. Say, all the women's divisions are like that, you know. Amanda in both of them, and then, you know. It's why the yeah, super dominant as well. Yeah, it's why the strawweight division is so fun and so competitive because there's so many good competitive fights there. But when you get to the other divisions, it's fun. But unfortunately, when you get to that championship level, like, yeah, Big it's like, it's like I, yeah, and they're not in a hurry to book Nunes and Shavanko again. But it's almost like I feel like that's uh, to quote Thanos, the inevitable. Like that's what's going to happen, right? Here. Yeah, yeah. Carney, what do you got to touch on that? Nunez does have two wins over Shevchenko, and while one of them was definitely uh, could have gone either way, as far as I'm concerned, there's no real reason for a trilogy unless this is going to be when one of them's about to retire and you want to, you know, put that uh, that exclamation point on their careers for who is the better fighter after they've been dominant in their divisions for so long. Because I don't see anyone beating Nunez, I don't see anyone beating Shevchenko other than each other. So I don't care who you give this girl after this fight. No one's ready for Nunez. So I'm just glad that the fight was short. I was that this and the heavyweight fight would be the ones that would be the three rounds of, you know, me needing to go take bathroom breaks and naps. But I'm glad they ended quickly and violently. And that's how I hope all the fights in these divisions will just end. So I don't have to spend 15 minutes of people being hesitant. 
not doing shit. <laughs> Congrats to Aldana for completely wrecking this girl, but uh, you're still not ready for Nunes. <laughs> Nobody ready for Nunes. Last, and take a shot at Shevchenko, but she would also murder you. So yeah, that's pretty much where I'm leaving it. I don't care who they fight next. The champs are going to stay the champs for a while, unless by some reason someone magically catches them on a bad day. All right, uh, Ty to Avasa. I got that one versus Greg Hardy. Uh, Glad you couldn't screw up Greg Hardy. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Ty. Ty to Avasa. Fantastic. I, I thought Ty to Avasa was gonna get caught. I thought the way he fights that Hardy would blitz him, and the blitz was his downfall. Like, uh, that, and, uh, yeah, and and Ty Ty to Avasa, like his knockout power was totally on display. And I was like, man, like I, I, I knew Ty hit hard, but it was like, you know, Greg's been hit by a couple people, and it's like, okay, nope, like this Ty caught him so good. And I think that's the danger too, though, when you do that blitz kind of style with it, like Hardy does too, though. Like he, he also walked right into that and ate that shit. Um, also, really, I mean, the big thing with Ty is like he's just so entertaining, right? He's doing the shoeies, his interviews with Rogan. He's down. He's drinking like hot sauce. He didn't know that, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't he, like that. It didn't look nah. like. But he was such a pro. Still, he just took it like a man. He was like, "What the hell was that?" And, you know, like so um, happy to have fans back in the arena. It looked like you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Hawani said, "Let's get that guy banned for life." What the hell? Um, <laughs> I uh, but I'll throw another match out here. Just uh, what I did today. Um, this guy's ranked actually a lot higher than him. I don't know if Ty's even 15, but I think it's a fun fight. Walt Harris. Um, you know, Walt's another guy who's explosive, but he's got to get caught. I think that could be a fun fight. Probably not going to go very long. So what do you guys think? I think there's a lot of good fights for him in the top 15. I think, uh, 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 what's his name? Blagoy Ivanov. Yep. That, that'd be a good fight for Ty. Um, who's that English guy that trains with Darren Till? Uh, can't remember his name now. Tom mm. something. Aspinall? Is that what it is? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That'd, be, that'd be a big step up for Ty. I think that'd be a tough matchup. He's on a win streak, and he's got a good little uh, buzz going, too. Yeah, yeah. Tom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be, uh, those would be some good ones. Also got... Uh... Augusto Sasaki? It's like, Sakai, yeah. Sakai, yeah. I think yeah. it's Sakai, yeah. Yeah, that's another one. So, yeah, a lot of fun matchups. Uh, Carney, what do you think about potential matchups and this fight? I think you really like this fight, actually. Oh, I absolutely. This fight surprised me. This was either going to be one of my favorite fights of the night or it's going to be absolutely terrible, and that depended on how long it went and what the outcome of that fight was. Um. I'm not shy about saying that I think Greg Hardy's a scumbag and I'm glad to see him get completely murked. And I think a lot of the MMA community felt the same way and it was good to go on social media and especially see a lot of the female fighters were also not shy about uh, voicing how excited they were to see a woman beater get completely destroyed. It's also hard to not cheer to Ivasa. I mean, you, you got this guy who's, who's lovable, he's funny. He comes out to these poppy 90s songs that uh you know, so good that's great really, he's drinking beer out of a shoe and you put him up against a guy who beat a woman who's the crowd gonna cheer for sure and yeah i saw that thing on, on twitter where it was like mma memes that precede unfortunate events and it was a photo of greg hardy pointing to the center of the octagon like <laughs> someone said i thought you said this was for memes that present uh preceded unfortunate events so i was just happy to see that uh that dude get murdered. But to go back to your point too, that blitz style, um, he had Tuivasa hurt. And I think that that was the natural thing for a lot of people to do is that you see, you stunned a guy, you run in for the kill. And I'm glad to see that he got caught and uh, paid for it. And I hope that the Greg Hardy experiment is over. As for Tuivasa, I'm with you guys on the potential matchups, except when Chevy threw out Walt Harris, the reason I don't want to see it. I threw out Walt Harris, but go ahead. I actually said Walt Harris, yeah, I was, but go ahead. um, The reason why I wouldn't want Walt Harris is because I don't want either of those two guys to lose. Okay. Um, So I hope that Tui Vasa can skip him, but I'm with you guys. I'm like, 
Aspinall, Ivanov, Sakai, or that could be potentially fun fights. I don't think this guy is necessarily going to have the Brandon Moreno Cinderella story of, you know, you lose some fights, get cut, come back, become a champion. But I'm here for watching two of us and some fun uh, slog fests while, while he's around. I think he's more uh, the cowboy type of character. Than right. Champion. Yeah. 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 And we need guys like that. So I'm we glad do. Yeah. yeah. Makes the cards fun. Um, so co-main event time, uh, Gilbert Burns, uh, great performance. The crowd was not having it, but man, when you're fighting a specialist like Wonder Boy, you don't rush in. And Gilbert, he did great takedowns. And Wonder Boy's got great. And, and shout out, I think it was Anik who po- pointed this out too. Wonder Boy has great takedown defense. It's not like everybody has success taking Wonder Boy down. And Gilbert did, and he did the little things. And uh, I know everybody. Uh, all the judges had it 29-28, but we even thought it might have been 30-27. That second round was very close. Um, I love Wonder Boy. I think that guy is just the best. I wish he could somehow get that title before he retires. But, man, Gilbert's got so many skills. And if it wasn't for the fact that our current well proofing, like, the guy was so good as it was anyway. But now, every time I see him, he's just getting better and better. He's like this masterful powerful striker that man Usman's gonna be one of those guys I don't know anyone could uh get uh I'll just say this um for Burns uh he's looking I'm gonna throw two at you here uh for the welterweight division for Burns I think he called out Masvidal I like that fight I'm interested what you guys think about that I got Burns in that I think it'll probably be a a decision but it'll be a good fight um and I'm gonna throw a welterweight uh potential opponents for Usman while we're on this subject because Usman doesn't have a title fight coming up. I think Kobe is the guy people are looking at because Kobe has probably gave him, even though Usman finished him, probably his toughest test, I would say. There's heat. It's going to be a good build on that fight, but uh, I'm going to throw a wild card one out here. Michael Chiesa, yep. if he beats, if he beats Vince, Vincent uh, Vincent okay. okay, okay. I think if he gets that win, Kiesa is a potential opponent here. And uh, I'm not saying he can beat Usman because I don't know if anyone can beat Usman. But that's a fight I'd like to see. Um, so your thoughts on potential opponents for Burns and uh, Kamaru Usman? So oh, in the fight. If I, if I remember this correctly, I think in that fight with Burns, <clears throat> didn't he actually have Usman hurt a little bit in that first round? Before yeah. He finished, I think, what, in the second? It was a good fight, but I'm not excited to see Burns jump right back in. Right. Um, there's a lot of guys in that top ten. I mean, you got Covington, Edwards, Bouquet, Kiesa. Um, you know, all killers. I don't care who you put them up against. Like, you know, you got one who's probably looking at someone like Covington or Edwards. So why not give this uh, give Burns a fight for essentially number one contender? Uh, and I, I am sad that he beat Wonder Boy. You know, it's hard to, to hate that dude. He might very well just end up being the gatekeeper for that division. Or if you want a shot at the champ, you're going to have to get through him. Uh, I did feel like if Burns was going to win, it was going to be on the ground. And he found a way to get him down, what, three times out of the, I believe, six attempts that he made. So uh, he, he fought a smart fight. Wonder Boy's a dangerous guy. They didn't let the crowd get to them. And, you know, is is. I, I think that probably could have headlined a fight night or something, but you know, when you look at all the other fights on the main card and the exciting finishes and, and exciting fights that we had, there were three fights before that that were absolutely crazy where it just ended fast and violently and then the crowd had to come down a little bit. So I'm sure that's why they were booing the hell out of that because it was a little more hesitant and technical fight. But, you know, I can't hate on the dude. It's hard to dislike Burns too, as much as I wanted Wonder Boy to win. Burns seems like a great dude. I hope that he could be a champ too. Um, unfortunately, there's only room for one champ in the division, and I'm not even excited to see him fight. Usman. <laughs> now, to your point, like you said, Usman is uh, he's, he's a scary dude. Uh, he can wrestle guys, he can knock them out. He's kind of a, a total package, other than a good promo. <laughs> yeah, um, and just one other thing, too. Um, like, as uh, far as that division goes, I mean, there's just so much talent, too, right? Like, Wonder Boy. Um, man, I don't know. Like, I'd like to, uh, there's still so many good fights with him, right? Like, Kiesa and Wonder Boy would be a great fight. And that, that Kiesa-Luke fight will be on the next, uh, pay-per-view, too. So, 
Shout that, out to that card. That top 10 is all killers. Yeah. So any matchup you have in there could be a fun fight. Anything else you want to add to that, Chevy? Are we good? Um, I think I want to see as unfair as this would be to Leon Edwards, I'd like to see him in Wonder Boy. Mm. Uh, fight or him in Burns if if you know Burns needs yeah. one more or whatever for a for a title, you know. Great point, by the way. Yeah. I didn't even – all the killers were mentioned. I didn't even mention Edwards either. Like, Edwards is, like, the guy who probably, besides Kobe, deserves a shot too. So, he's right there. Maybe Edwards gets a title shot, and maybe Kobe meets the winner of uh, Luke Chiesa, you know? But – Yeah. I, it's, I mean, he beat Nate in his last fight. It wasn't convincing. Yeah, he almost got finished at the end. And right, right. Nate's, you know, not, he really should be fighting that lightweight, but – I yeah, think if yes. he had, if he had dominated that fight and finished Nate, then you put him right in line for the title. But I know he's won like nine in a row or something like that. But I'd like to see him against one of those top three guys. Yeah, there's this disconnect with Edwards where like he puts on impressive performances and no one cares about him. Like that the whole thing with Diaz. What was everybody talking about after that fight? The last minute of the fight, where Diaz yeah. came back and almost killed him, and we completely forgot. You know, most casuals wouldn't even remember who he fought. If yeah, completely dominated him or finished him or destroyed him. They'd be talking about Edwards. No one even remembers that performance that he had for the first, you know, four and a half, <clears throat> five rounds. Then back to the Wonder Boy Burns fight. It, the people complaining about, uh, yeah, about you know him just basically staying on top of him. Uh, I don't know if those people want to give up half their paycheck for some. Right. You know, bullshit judge's decision or to get clipped by the one of the most dangerous strikers in MMA, let alone the division. But, you know, if it was me, I'm going to lay on top of him and get paid. Yeah. Get back yeah. to that title fight. So I thought he was active. I mean, yeah. Yeah, he was. Wonder Boy, I thought, actually did fairly well on the ground for someone of Burns' yeah. caliber to like get, be able to get back up. Right. Like, I didn't think that, you know, he's a karate guy. I didn't think he'd be able to get up at all. But They even tried doing that bullshit Fry Takayama spot, which just wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Both. Yeah. But, um, but, might have been more casuals out in the audience last night, too, though. But go ahead. I was going to say, the arena was full of that guy from one Bellator show I went to that was just calling everyone pussies for going to the ground. Yeah. yeah. Screaming the from the stands. Yeah. Yeah. If you're on the ground doing anything other than ground and pound, they don't want to see it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So main event time. Uh, Connor versus Dustin. And I gotta tell you, uh, you know, I know you guys, uh, especially you, Carney, like, you know, like, fuck Connor. But I gotta say, as a guy, like, I kind of held out on Connor a little bit last night. Was like kind of like my breaking point for me. I was like, this guy. It, it wasn't even like I was like, I wasn't even mad. I was just more like, this is fucking sad and pathetic. Like, um, the fight itself, I'll get to. But like his actions afterwards were. He's this bitching, and I don't even know why the UFC, I know why they did it, but gave him the mic. It just looks sad. Like, this guy's just talking shit about the guy's wife on the ground. Like, dude, you just got beat up, and your leg got busted up in the process. Um, don't get me wrong. It's MMA. Uh, I think Dustin would have won round two, but it would have been interesting. Connor did pop up, but then, again, it is what it is. Uh that's taken left away from Dustin. I just don't think we give enough credit sometimes for MMA being so unpredictable. Um, like Masvidal said, right? Uh, and someone pointed out Amanda Nunes. In this day and age, nobody should be a 10-to-1 favorite in MMA because it is so wild. But, man, Dustin looks so good, and I think he's the only guy to ever win the first round against Connor. Like, you know, he literally beat him up in the first round. Well, maybe Habib, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, besides Habib, like, Dustin's the first guy, and do it on the feet. Like, you know, very impressive. Um, maybe Chad Mendes, too, actually. Because uh, I don't think... <laughs> again, we're talking wrestlers, though, too. Um, but, yeah. Just a uh, great performance by Dustin. I'm so happy. Uh, there's not really much to talk about future fights here. It's going to be for the title. It's going to be Charles Oliveira. I, nothing against Oliveira. I like him. But, man, I really like Dustin. You talk about a gritty, bust-your-ass performer. If anybody ever deserved a shot at that title and to win that belt... It's Dustin Poirier. Uh, great, great stuff. Shout out to his wife for uh, having his back through all this crazy shit. Um, and, uh, yeah, 
Can't say enough good things about Dustin. I can't look forward to that title. And as far as Connor goes, hey, man, um, he's good box office. But just from a personal standpoint, I found him very sad and kind of pathetic. And it's the way he acted last night. Go ahead, guess. Chevy? Uh, pathetic is exactly the word, I think. Uh, I was embarrassed for Connor after yeah. the fight. Um He's yelling at Dustin and calling his wife a hoe and saying she's in his DMs or whatever while they're walking out. Um, it was embarrassing. Um, and I, I felt like, you know, Joe's sitting on the ground giving him the mic. I feel like you could see he just wanted to take the mic back. So it's not embarrassing letting him embarrass himself anymore. But as far as the fight went, I thought Connor was looking pretty good. Better game plan of uh, landing kicks on Dustin or whatever. Obviously, that was his downfall in the end because, you know, Dustin probably checked one of those kicks weak in the leg and then he snapped it. So, um, super gross. Yeah, I don't need to see that shot <laughs> five times. UFC, please don't do that to me. Um, as far as Dustin and DuBronx, uh, I'm I'm always gonna go for Dustin in that fight. I like uh, I like Charles, but Dustin's the man. So hopefully he gets that fight and uh, wins and holds on to the belt for a while. Maybe he gets a another fight with Connor to make a bunch more money. But I'm less interested in it for now. Sure, uh, and I want to say one more thing too uh, before I let you go, Carney. Uh, I just meant to say. Inactivity, uh, Michael Bisping pointed this out too. And like people talk, does Connor still want it? Well, you can still want it, but if you're not doing the things to progress, and if you're not in the you know fight game constantly, and you're not constantly doing it to improve, then that's going to be an issue constantly going forward, too, because that's what Dustin's doing. Dustin looks like a like Connor, yeah, okay, oh, I didn't expect leg kicks, so he's working on leg kicks. Well, what's Dustin do? Well, he can wrestle, he can fight. He can do whatever because he's just a well-rounded fighter. And he keeps improving. So, anyway, Carney, your thoughts? Connor ain't bit his bones, ain't shit. His legs ain't shit. He can <laughs> move on and do something else. You know, everyone gets back up because he's still a draw. He still brings in more money than everyone else. But it's he's sad. He's a bum. He's desperate. We listened to that post-fight promo. He's just fighting to stay relevant. He sounds like a guy doing an impression of a guy doing an impression of Conor McGregor. <laughs> it's just, you know, he keeps going through the same shtick. People keep buying it. He was going on that rant that I could barely understand about. He was completely destroying Poirier in that fight. Tell that to the two judges that had a 10-8 for Poirier in that round. I wish it could have gone on for another half minute or so without Herb Dean stopping it or the bell stopping it. And just watch him get pummeled because I'm tired of him. He's a bum. The sport's got to move on without him, and he's just going to try and stay relevant. Go take an acting job somewhere where you can act on how to be Conor McGregor better than you had been uh, leading up to that fight. To bring the dude's wife into it, to call her a hoe, to say that you're going to kill the man. Uh, it's it's pushing some, some boundaries there, and I think that that's just, again, him just being desperate and trying to be entertaining and relevant. He's got too many people that will still support him. No matter what he does, he can go punch old guys in a bar or throw dollies through a window. And I can't even comment on all the, the sexual allegations or any of that because I don't know if that's legit or not. Either way, the guy's just a mess, and uh, I'm done with him. So you're not going to watch him versus Jake Paul or Logan Paul when that happens? <laughs> I've never watched any of the Paul brothers fight. I don't plan to. I'm not uh. to the whole, despite, you know, my unfortunately my, my first name having been Carney. Um, I don't like carny bullshit. Fuck well, I'm hoping that Woodley ends Jake Paul and we're over this whole yes. shit. If that happens and he completely murders him, I will then give the money to watch a replay of that. <laughs> oh. I'm a Woodley fan, but I will be. If he yeah. beats him, I will be a Woodley fan all day. That's funny. That's funny. Um, all right, before we get out of here, uh, I'm going to throw just one random fight. I was looking at upcoming fights. I wasn't really excited about next week's fight night, but I was looking ahead to the week after that. And uh, I'll just get a comment on the main event. Uh, Corey Sanhagen versus TJ Dillashaw. Oh, TJ, man. TJ, obviously, um, you know, uh, he had the drug issues there. And so he hasn't been active the last few years. But if we're basing this off on past TJ Dillashaw's 
fights and how good he's looked in fights versus Corey Sanhagen, who's looked so, so impressive. Like, this should be a barn burner. Uh, but based on our conversation of things we're talking about, I'm going to go with activity, and I'm going with Corey because, to me, that seems to really make a difference. Guys, what do you think about the potential of this fight? Chevy, I'll start with you. You really seem to enjoy this one. And uh, who are you rooting for, who you got, and what do you see happening? Before you, get in there, before you get in there, I, I just want to say I have no idea what we're talking about because right now I'm doing some volunteer work down at the homeless shelter, and I lost the feed for about a solid minute. So what fight are we talking about? Oh, Corey Sanhagen and uh, TJ Dillashaw. All right, cool. Chevy, go on. <laughs> uh, I'm super excited for this fight. I love both guys. Um, I, say, I think if we see uh, the TJ – that used to be at bantamweight. weight. Uh, he definitely gets it done, but like you were saying, with inactivity, obviously he's been out for two plus years now. Um, Corey's on the rise, so so I think it'll be really close. But Ring Rust will get the TJ, and I think Corey gets it done. Fireworks. Yeah. All right, Yasada, who you got? Um, although Dillashaw is a known drug cheat. At this point, uh, I guess I kind of struggle with how I feel about him as a, a fighter because I don't know how many times he'd actually done something like that. I believe his excuse was he tried to do it to cut weight for that fight, whatever it might be. Um, I was always impressed with Dillashaw and how quick and unpredictable he can be. However, you know, a couple of years have passed. He's been inactive, at least in actual fights. Uh, I can't predict how that one's going to go, but Sanhagen is a very dangerous dude. And um, I actually favor him to win this just because of the inactivity. And, you know, because uh, you know, that's really what it is. Just inactivity on Dillashaw's part. But, you know, he can always surprise you. Um, I can think of all, uh, several fights where he looked like he could be in, in trouble and then just out of nowhere comes back and lands just one punch, one kick, whatever it might be, and it totally turns the tide of the fight. I just expect it to be fun. So, Dave, I have a question for you. Let's yeah. uh, hypothetical, let's say TJ wins. Do you think he goes right to a title shot against, uh, well, whoever it is, I guess Aljo or right. Peter Yon? Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, how do you think he does against those? You think he matches up well? Got to see how he looks against Sanhagen. But if it's the TJ Dillashaw of old, and he puts on a performance against Sanhagen, then yeah, I like that TJ's chances. Uh, if it's not the drugs, let's say he just did it the one time. A lot of hypotheticals here, right, guys? But let's say he did it one time to cut weight. I don't that performance against Cejudo. I really throw that out because he looked like a shrunken. Yeah, like it was like a ghost. Like he looked horrible. Like so, I don't count that. So I going based off. Like, hey, we could talk shit about Connor, but like I don't count the Mayweather boxing match either. It's a fucking different animal, and that's the same thing with this here. Like with um, TJ, that last fight he had with Flyweight was a different animal. So if it's the TJ of old, and he puts on a great performance against Cody San 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 Hagen, ah, um, yes, uh, I like his chances just as well against either of those guys. Um, that being said, I favor Jan to beat Aljo. No offense. I love Aljo. Maybe he can surprise me, but based off what we were seeing last time, I like Lon. Lon keeps getting better. He's dominant. And, man, God, Jan hits so hard, too. Uh Jan might be the best in the division. So that's a very exciting prospect, I guess, right? To see Jan that we've seen dominant versus TJ at his peak. If, All right. if we can see. So I, I, I'm going to lean I'm gonna lean towards Jan. So I'm not, I'm not on the fence here. I'm going to lean towards Peter Jan. So, let, so let's say TJ loses this fight. Would you like to see him against O'Malley? Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. <laughs> I think that'd be a good, a good uh, matchup. Yeah. And Put I think off. he smashes O'Malley. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Unless it, unless he's so far from a shell of himself. That, right. You know? But, yeah, uh, absolutely. Sign it up. Uh, and what is um, what is the deal with him and Cruz? Are they one and one against each other? 
Our screws. Oh, wait, oh, one and oh, did they ever fight again? All right, I'm blanking no, out on that. That one fight. We're talking about Cruz and Cruz Dillashaw. and Dillashaw, yeah. Up in Boston in right. 15 or so. Was like yeah. Fight, and I think that was it. I might yeah. Be I can tell you right now. I got TJ's uh, record right here in front of me. Hold on. Um, TJ Dillashaw. Yeah, that is the only time they ever fought. So, Dillashaw and Cruz, uh, win or lose, uh, could be a fun fight, too. I wouldn't mind seeing that again. So, that'd be interesting. Peterson as the referee. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Cigarettes and beer. All right, guys. Uh, we went for uh, about 41 minutes today. So, I think we did pretty good. Uh, Before you go wrap this up, I'm going to send a... Don't wrap me up. I'm going to send a word to Dana White because I know he listens to you because you're obviously his, his favorite podcast. Throw some money at Zuma Gulov for that standing guillotine that kicked off the night last night. Because as much as Tai Tuivasa deserves a performance for being a woman killer, that performance for the night bonus, throw this dude some cash too. So just uh, shouting out your boy Dana White. Well, yeah, it was slick. Has learned how to fight his name for <laughs> Dana <laughs> Uncle Dana Uncle Dana Alright guys Working fans Combat cast edition We're up